Hello? <laughs> that was a good way to answer. I didn't expect you to say hello. I think I've done that like a lot of other times I too. Videos. <laughs> I was going to say hi I was, or I was going to introduce you to be like, Nathan, you want to take it away? And then say hello. Hello. <laughs> hi. Okay. Welcome back to another Nerdcast. Hey. Definitely been a minute since we've done one of these. Uh, it's been, it's been a couple minutes. Yeah, two it's been a couple, whole it's been a couple two minutes. Minutes. whole two minutes, and then it's been done. So I guess this one will be kind of a quick uh, recap of the, at least some of the things that I saw. I I actually didn't even know this was going on, the Summer Game Fest twenty twenty two. Uh, yeah. I was still expecting E3, apparently, like Nathan was telling me, telling me earlier, I asked him about it, I was like, oh, this is really cool, when's E3? And he goes, it's not happening. I was like, oh, okay. okay so, yeah, I've been out of the loop for um, just kind of watching games, random game trailers, just kind of seeing what has popped up. I remember them, I remember this one being talked about, at least. Um, this one right here was the Callisto Protocol uh, gameplay. Um, so, we'll, we'll watch through a couple of videos that we do have that at least I found interesting. Um, so the games I would definitely pick up from uh, once they do release. Uh, but this one was the Council of Protocol uh, gameplay. So we'll go ahead and move forward watching this one. Um, yeah. I figured we would just kind of talk about um, some some past games. This one's definitely reminiscent of um, some games that we have played, which would be uh, Dead Space series. Um, yes, Dead Space series is scary as heck <laughs> that game scared the crap out of me i think i played that one before i played doom oh, this was very reminiscent of just the very beginning level of dead space so so something interesting to throw in before um before we jump into the uh what's, what's, what's it called again oh yeah the callisto protocol yeah so something interesting to throw in here is um i guess the so a guy, his name is Glenn Schofield. Uh, he basically worked on uh, Dead Space. He was like a producer. Oh, sorry, worked at Call of Duty. He was like a, he was on a Call of Duty, like he was a Call of Duty veteran. So he worked mm -hmm. for like I don't remember if it was like uh, Infinity Ward or um, what's the other Call of Duty creators? Sledgehammer game. Uh, Sledgehammer. Yeah, I know they worked on Infinity War as well yeah. as um, a lot of the newer yeah. ones. And so I guess. A while back, uh, this game was supposed to, which I think, have a connection to uh, the PUBG single-player story-driven game. Mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of people uh, were saying that this is what they were creating, and I guess it was going to take place in the PUBG world. Which doesn't really make sense, <laughs> but it's kind of cool to see those Sorry. little <laughs> more connections anyways. <laughs> I didn't expect him to start just stomping on that guy right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Threw me off a little angry. And... Uh, Something pretty cool also is, um, so I guess Glenn Schofield and another guy who was a Dead Space producer, they opened up a studio called Striking Distance. And I guess their new game, um, which was going to evolve from, you know, player Battlegrounds Unknown, um, beyond like a multiplayer shooter and then into the realm of narrative driven story campaigns. Um, they wanted to build a i guess i guess like a call of duty campaign but in PUBG. Mm. but oh that was they sick it more as um they were like okay i guess we'll scrap that and let's just make a dead space copy i guess mm. i don't know um but this game looking sick though that's my bad i totally forgot i wasn't even sharing that for you oh no it's okay <laughs> no worries <laughs> And the game I'm actually re really excited for, though the um, I know talk kind of talking about it uh, with the game originally, because I believe this is that game, the one where it was supposed to be that PUBG single player game. Is I mean we have the same companies that were supposed to be working on them, um, same people. It was supposed to be a single player kind of linear, Dead Space style, single player horror game. Um, do you know if they had any gameplay or if there was like some sort of trailer? Because I don't remember if you sent it to me, if there was a trailer. So kind of talking about it or was it just articles? I think it was a couple of years ago, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. at an E3, they Blue Hole announced that they were doing a uh, like full campaign story for right. PUBG. 
and then was there they ever a video. No, I don't think it was ever any gameplay or anything for it okay. that I know leaked online or anything. I just know that I think it was going to take place on Erangel, and okay. they were basically going to make Erangel into like a campaign, like story mission. See, that would be awesome. Yeah, which would be awesome, but like, I guess they they actually never came out with gameplay though. So gosh, you just threw that guy in the fan. That actually reminds me of um, Half Life. Uh, oh, the, this game or? Uh, right here with this gun, the thing that he just sees right there. Oh, like the the gravity gun from Half Life. Yeah, that's what it reminds me of the gravity gun. I can see the Call of Duty, um, uh, not references, what you would call it, uh, with like the crawler, kind of the. Oh, like the the Call of Duty zombies. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. You got sucked into the fan. Or not the fan, but what is that? Like a shredder. Blue collar jobs ain't no joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God. Um, but this game, it looks interesting. I mean, it's yeah. definitely going to be one that's going to keep you up at night if you play it. I mean, it looks creepy as heck. And, oh, for uh, sure. If you're definitely going to be a big, big fan of horror games. It's definitely mm. going to be a top game to pick up, I'm assuming, that yeah. a lot of people are going to be excited for this. Um, and I know a lot of people wanted to have Dead Space 4. But it's like, I think this one's going to be a really good game where I think this is going to be able to fill that void of the, uh, you know, of people wanting Dead Space 4. I think this is going to be that game to actually do it justice and fill that spot and make it feel very much at home of it being a standalone, essentially like a official replacement of Dead Space 4. Yeah. So I think this game will do a good job with that. So I know Dead Space 3 actually had uh, co-op, if I remember correctly. I forgot and about that. It was basically like two soldiers, but with Dead Space. And um, it'd be, mm. I, I don't think this game is going to have co-op, but it would be cool to have co-op in this game and go through and shoot mm. all the aliens and stuff with like a friend. I think that would be awesome. I mean, that's and that's kind of the beauty of like PC gaming with being able to do mods is you can kind of just do anything. And that's something so. that we're missing nowadays, too. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot yeah. of co-op couch potato games anymore. yeah well i was gonna say speaking of well one speaking of uh co-op game or uh multiplayer is we did you did mention uh you tag shiloh and it was it would be nice to have him on here to be able to talk about it but uh the last of us multiplayer um first game solid multiplayer i never really got into it i was terrible at it um but they're supposed to be coming out with a multiplayer for the last of us 2 uh, but instead of it, them adding it to The Last of Us 2, they're actually creating their own standalone version of multiplayer for The Last of Us 2. That's so, good. I th I th so I think that'll be awesome. I know you guys played the heck out of that one. Um, but also, um, speaking of um, you know couch co-op games, I was actually very surprised to see, wh what was it? It was Diablo 4? They said couch co-op? Yeah, yeah gonna do? Couch co -op. <laughs> out of all the games, I was like, Diablo 4 is going to be a couch co op game. But it made me happy, though, because, like, be able to kind of see that. Like, yeah, I think a lot of people have kind of seen, especially since since COVID, that there's a lot of people that have seen or kind of realized how much that they miss being able to actually play games with people. Yeah. Because otherwise, you know, people, the people that were sitting in, the, in their house, you know, um, you would have to have two consoles in the same house then on the drawing from the same Wi-Fi like to, play a game, to play yeah, games with each other and just playing LAN essentially. But, you know, sometimes people just want to pop up on one console um, and then just play the game together. So it's nice to see that some games are kind of coming back uh, doing that. Yeah, I remember like, you know, you always talk about how, you know, you and your brother Shiloh always grew up playing like oh, Star Wars yeah. together. Yeah, Those are, like, like Battlefront 2. Yeah, we used to play that all the time together. We would run through the... Um, most of the original Medal of Honor games we would run through. Um, Lord of the Rising, Rings. Ri Rising Sun. Um, yeah. There was, uh, I'm trying to remember what the other one was. Frontline, I think, was co op as well. Yes. So we'd play through those. Um, we would play, but it's just any sort of like co op game, which it's funny because we, we uh, cut it out of the podcast. But speaking of Ninja Turtles, there's, you know, there's a new one that's coming out, which is very much like the classic Ninja Turtle four player kind of top down games that they get. So that'll be awesome. Um, but me and Shiloh, we used to, we used to, that was one of the games we used to always rent was they would come out with the Ninja Turtles uh, games and it was the Warner Brothers 
um, Ninja Turtles show that they used to have. So, uh-huh. it was the, that, so it was that that early 2000s themed uh, Ninja Turtle games. Uh, we, so we, we would rent those for the PS2, uh, play those games all the time together. We would run through the War of the Rings. They had that, uh, it was like that tower mode where you start at like level one and you go all the way to like level 100. It was just ran- randomized monsters oh, that would come through. So that one was super cool too, but it's nice to see that companies are co- they're coming back with those uh, couch co-op style um was it multiplayer games, you know, as well as just kind of some classic games too. Was it Lord of the Rings Conquest? Was that the one that was like Star Wars Battlefront or Lord of the Rings? Yeah, Conquest was like the Lord of the Rings style uh Battlefield um or yeah, Battlefront the, Conquest. Back in the day. That game was crazy. I remember seeing that game first come out and I was like, This is gonna be nuts. <laughs> um yeah, I mean I Yeah, the I, heroes I, I, were like trolls and whatnot. Yeah, they super were. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty cool though. I I I'm really glad they're bringing back a lot more co-op gaming because we definitely need yeah. that. Oh, for sure. And that's one of the I would say it's not really a problem with PC gaming because generally PC, you know, you don't really run into that. PC is very much like I'm sitting at my computer, and no one else is going to be using it. Yeah. Uh, but it is nice to see that some games are being made co-op for PC. Yeah. So yeah. something that's pretty cool. I and I don't know if it's going to be co-op for. For PC, I know sometimes they have two different versions, like Black Ops 2 yeah. console w- was co-op. Um, you could do that couch co-op, but on PC, it was just they didn't have that as an option in the menu. So I'm wondering if Diablo is going to be the same way, if it's couch co-op on PC, or if it's just going to be for, um, if that's going to be for like Xbox or PlayStation. It's cool to see. Um, I guess we'll see. Uh, one thing kind of random is, uh, mm. developers they've been acknowledging mobile games and like you know the past what like <clears throat> last week or whatever that yeah. one more got released and it's cool that blizzard acknowledged that like people were going to port it to the pc anyways so they just put it on yeah. there <laughs> and made it right, free yeah so right um, mm. i, I wish it's awesome to do that mm-hmm. i think it's awesome i mean like and it's it's so funny too to see how seamlessly things are working now where, you know, I remember when the Xbox, they were they were talking about how, you know, the Xbox was going to come out with their first, like, portable platform, you know, and it's it never it was always kind of funny where it was like, oh, it's never going to, you know, it, never, it either never happens or people doubt it because of the technology. Yeah. And then now you see things like, um, not just like the Steam Deck that's coming out, which actually does look pretty cool and it does have a lot of raw power into it. But the um, but just mobile gaming in general, like yeah. they just brought Apex on there. It plays just like Apex, like normally. Uh, Fortnite, when I did play that on the iPhone when it did exist before, it played seamlessly. Just plugging in the um, PlayStation or Xbox controller to the phone over Bluetooth, yeah. ran perfectly fine. And it like I go, fun. I go back to when uh, they all they had on the phones back then was uh, Doodle Jump. You had like Doodle Jump. You had Angry Birds. Like all these different you know, kind of dumb um, games that people were creating for the phones when, like, the iPhones were first coming out. And then all of a sudden you switch to, like, they have, like, Call of Duty Black Ops and Zombies, and they have full story games on the phone. Yeah. And then now they're coming out with full, um, Player games. you know, dungeon crawlers, like um, MMORPGs, all these different games that work on your phone and play yeah. just like PC. And then some of them, they're actually making it seamless, like, like Diablo Immortal where you can play on your phone and then you're like, all right, I'm home. And then just hop on your computer to play on there instead. Yeah. <laughs> which is, which I think is awesome. Like I like that seamless sort of gameplay. Yeah. The transition. It, mm-hmm. I think that's where a lot of the games are going, especially because um, yeah. I know cloud gaming is trying to take over, oh, which yeah. I, I'm kind of iffy on cloud gaming. I, I think it's cool. I want to get to a point where it's seamless connection at all times, you know, because mm-hmm. you've seen cloud gaming where it's like, it's cool and it works, but then you have like that st- stream, <clears throat> like a second stream delay when you're playing. So, right. I mean, it's cool to have like a max powerhouse PC at all times, but like when you have that stream delay, um, I can't wait till they actually are able to fix that. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, uh, and then we had this other game. This one actually, I didn't even know this one even existed. Oh, Witchfire? We're watching it. Witchfire. Witchfire looks really cool. It's definitely one that I do want to pick up. 
And I'm trying to remember the game. Let me look it up on my phone. Okay. Um, but it reminds me of a game that I kind of played. It honestly, you know, what it reminds me of. It looks like to me just Elden Ring or like Skyrim. But with guns. But with guns. That's what yeah. it reminds me of. But yeah, that's what it reminds you of, though. I'm trying to remember what the the slow motion aspect reminds. I think it's that one. Uh, I can't remember. I'm trying to think what this game, game reminds called. me of. There's a certain title that's coming to my head, and I can't remember. It just looks so cool, though. All I'm getting is just slow motion, high FPS uh, shots, like like the slow mo guys. That's all I'm getting right now on YouTube. Hot shot, is, I think, is what it's called, isn't it? No, it's not hot shot. Oh well. I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember what the game is called, but it's um. Are you it reminds muted? me of. <laughs> Am I muted? Yeah, there you are. Oh no, I was just muted on Discord. Sorry. Um, uh -huh. the uh, that's what it reminds me of, though. Is it reminds me of uh, I could have sworn it was called Hot Shot. I gotta look up now. This game reminds me of like a medieval yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, super hot. That's what I was trying to rem uh, remind me. Try to figure out. I think it was called Super Hot. I think. Anyways, what, it was that. What, yeah, I think it's. I think it's super hot. It's that. Um. Or no, this. Well, this one's like. <laughs> it's like an Android game, but it's that one game that it's. Um. Yeah, super hot. Yeah, here we go. This game. Oh, I never played that. I don't want to go to this website, but <laughs> uh, but it's it's on Steam. So basically, the games to where when you shoot, I believe the game works in real time, but when you're not shooting, the game is in slow mo. Oh, that's cool. So it's like, so I think it it moves in normal time when you're shooting and moving, but when you're not doing anything, the game's in slow motion. So you can kind of like time your shots, which. They actually have another game that's kind of like that. Um, I'll have to find it sometime. Um, but it looks a little more, it's, it looks more realistic. It's not like the silhouettes, like these kind of like faceless characters. Um, they have another one where kind of looks like, oh, I think it is this one actually. Um, yeah, it's, it's a slow motion game inspired by the Fear uh, series. Oh, okay. Let, let me see if I can look that one up actually. Let's see here. Um, slow-mo shooter fear. I think it's this game. I'm talking mm. about fear? I'm going to have to find it, though. Um, if you can Google it for me. Yeah. Um, we can just move on. But the, um, so there's a new game that's inspired by the fear series that I was just watching not too long ago. And it's, um, it looks super cool, though. But it's it's inspired by like the Fury series where it's like it got like all this different slow mo and stuff. Hmm. But it, okay. but it was newer. It was newer though. It wasn't like two years ago. I think I know I what you're talking about, but I can't think of what it's called either right now. Guns and all. Yes, it's not it's not this game though. Because it looks like way more realistic though. But anyways, it, it looks super cool though, and that's kind of what um, this one, Witchfire, reminds me of. Is just the setting of the game reminds me of Elden Ring. <laughs> yes, just kind of that medieval, just kind of that, uh, uh, medieval style or that kind of gothic, um, bloodborne -y yes, sort of kind of game, but with like those Elden Ring style monsters, which looks really cool. Um, the rifle reminded me of like Call of Duty, though. It was that was kind of giving me World of War vibes. 
But this this one was actually sick though. This one was the alternator on Apex. Yeah, this one looks sick. What do you think about the powers you get? I think it'd be awesome. Like, I used to never really care for games where you had powers in them. Yeah, I wasn't. But I, but I think this one, being able to have powers, is gonna make it a lot more fun than just dealing with just guns and just shooting. Yeah. So I think it'll be nice to be able to kind of combo things and just kind of see how they work well to, with each other. Like that, it looks like they, they have like a chain reaction. So, AOE. something I was also thinking of, they're kind of borrowing from Bioshock with those too. What's that? With like the, the plasmids and all that, with the yeah. power. That's true. So you gotta have like a Bioshock, Doom, you gotta have like that medieval feel. Mm. You know what this game kind of reminds me of too? Is what um, the? Remnants from the Ashes. Yes. Do you remember that game? Yeah. That's what this game kind of reminds me of too, is Remnants of the Ashes. We we, we actually played through that game for a while together. Mm -hmm. I played, yeah, I played that with you and then I played through with uh, Hype for a bit. Hmm. But that's what this game kind of reminds me of, which looks kind of cool. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Um, mm -hmm. I'll definitely be picking it up when it comes out. I, I definitely have been joining, like, I, so one thing I've noticed, uh, just real quick, I want to touch on is there's two game genres that have been getting really big. Arcade shooters, kind of like Witchfire, mm -hmm. and then uh, platformer, like 2D games. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why, but there's just been a big surge of them. And every platformer game that's been coming out has been trying to copy, like, uh, Souls, like Soul, like Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Dark Souls is so big. Yep. Every game comes out, it's like, oh, cool, another platformer. And they're like, yeah, it's Souls-like. I'm like, oh, okay. Souls-like. Yeah, it's every yeah. platform now is either a Souls copy or then you have 2D, uh, sorry, uh, arcade shooters like this, kind of like Series Sam, um, Doom, stuff like that, uh, that's coming out that, I don't know, everybody's trying to copy each other, but it, this yeah. is definitely unique, though. I mean, hmm. I've never seen a well, game since, like medieval times where I feel like we're kind of in the times of we we definitely have seemed to move past the you know we had the battle royale um you know that span of time where we had battle royales that's all we had and yeah. then we had the whole oh we're trying to you know everyone's trying to kill wow and then everybody's coming out with their own you know MMORPG yes. and then now it kind of seems like we're in that spot where you know with Elden Ring coming out, you know we had Bloodborne before that, we had uh, Sekiro, we mm -hmm. had some other Souls-like games, and then Elden Ring. It seems like we're now kind of coming out with these games where people like the challenge. People yes. want these kind of more difficult games because I would say like they're kind of nice. Like even playing um, Diablo Immortal, I guess is the one thing I get. What is kind of bringing me back is I haven't really played a game in a while that had playability which of course is gonna be people that are gonna be fighting me on this because they're like oh do you have a moral pay to win you know not huh? you can't move forward unless you pay money for me i haven't even noticed that i've been leveling completely fine just you know without spending money yeah and i think what has been bringing me back is there's i get bored of single player games because there's not a lot of playability you play through it unless there's one where you have multiple different endings sure whatever but it's not a lot of those. And I get bored just playing for four hours and I'm like, all right, what else do I do? I've completed the game. I can roll around in the world, do whatever. Something like Diablo Immortal or games like this where it's difficult, you know, like Bloodborne, you get frustrated, but you're like, okay, I think I'm kind of getting the hang of it. I could, this next try, I think I'll get him. Yeah. You know, and, it, and it brings you back. Um, so I think that's kind of why we're in this era of these diff creating these difficult games. Because people like the challenge, but also there's just there's a lot of playability with it. And, and I think esports that's a big thing with that too. You know, For people sure. want the competitiveness. People, of games. yeah, love competitive. Right. I mean, now you know it's just competitive. I guess in the sense of you know just you against the AI world, but there's yeah. no PvP. Mm -hmm. But it still has that <laughs> butthole clenching scenarios. <laughs> yes, yes, so it does. it's like yeah. So there's still that. <clears throat> But yeah, no, I'm excited. Like this one looks really cool. I was trying to remember the game that kind of reminded me of. Um, I have it on my Steam. I'm trying. I'm just trying to remember what it was called. But um, 
kind of remember the same thing where you had like some powers it was like fast paced but it had these kind of fantasy style characters but it was also a shooter too Hmm. um i'm trying to remember what it was i i can't remember what it was called what was it was it single player multiplayer it was single player they had like a little demo that came out and then they had moved on from there to like an actual standalone version of the game um and i can't remember it's like the gears of war like one no, we're talking. Not, not Gears of War. Um, I know I have it right here. Just uh, give me a second to find it real quick. Um, you want me to stall? You want me to do some comedy? Uh, yeah. Can you do a little dance real quick? Marriage! Yeah, marriage. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like Dwight. Yeah, he needed yeah. Uh, Michael to <laughs> do his little jokes. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> Is my pop it up in the, oh bright memory okay bright memory uh let me just put that up real quick just so we can kind of yeah go for it just so i think show you bright memory um so they had like a little um demo um so the bright memory and infinite was like the actual like um new one i think that came out <clears throat> bright memory was just the little demo they had so this one's more like an anime kind of take on it though general Kind of reminds me of like Metal Gear <laughs> with like the subtitles and whatnot. I liked it. It was very, very fast paced. Graphics actually look really nice too. It's created by one dude. But it reminds me of like Titanfall kind of with like the AI or the, uh, the HUD. And this thing was kind of the same thing, where it was like you went through, um, they had mobs, like different people that you would fight, um, so they had like different minions, but then they also had uh, bosses that you would fight too, and it was like this kind of like fantasy style, futuristic shooter. This game looks sick though. Yeah, so you could like boost the side, you could double jump, you could like wall run and whatnot, you get the, yeah, these different powers right here. That thing's cool too, the sword. Let me see real quick if we can go over here. See if you can find like a boss fight or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They just seem very different, like, and that's kind of what I'm seeing too from, um, from the, uh, from Witchfire, is it just seems very. It seems very different, but then not different at the same time. <laughs> yeah, like it seems, no, it seems like something that people would have thought of, where they're like, yeah, fantasy, you know, Skyrim, or like Elder Rings with guns. Like, it definitely sounds like something someone would create from a mod. Yeah. But it just looks like it's been done so well. Okay. Record immediately if anything happens. It seems, it seems really cool, though. It was created by one person, you say? This one was by one person. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's crazy what people can do. See, even the mods on these guns look cool. Like, it looks like it like shocks people. What are the created in Unity? I don't. Know. I don't know if it was like Unreal or yeah, if it was Unity. Hmm. What they used? This game's yeah, cool this, though. Yeah, this game looks really cool though. But yeah, that, that's what it reminds me of. Is it reminds me of uh, Bright Memory. Yeah, it looks like it too. Mm. Yeah, so that'd be cool. Um, um well i was gonna say it's up to you if you want to talk about it we can see a bit but screen yeah yeah absolutely uh, i guess moving on from games for a minute i know it's kind of random jumping to uh yeah there's my boy ghost face um uh so scream six is coming out next year uh not gonna be until march this time i think it's like march 23rd uh i'm super stoked you know we just had scream five this past year and but they're actually gonna be bringing ghostface uh you can see here uh, to New York City, so um, this uh, is gonna be first. People where are, are they, already where are they located again? Uh, no, what do you mean? Because oh, you said oh. that you're bringing him to New York City. Where are they originally located? In the other so, ones? okay, so the fictional town in the movie is called Woodsboro. Um, mm -hmm. That's what, and the original Scream was actually filmed up in Santa Rosa in California. Oh, okay, so only like you know an hour away from us where we lived. <laughs> 
Um, and it was up in, and then the ending of the movie at Stu's house was actually filmed over by Bodega Bay. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, which was pretty cool. And the, the house is there, and it's like been a big tourist attraction and everything. Um, but it's cool to actually see Ghostface is going to be going to New York because, so this movie is, if you don't know, uh, Gail, it's going to be centered on Gail's Weathers. She's the reporter. You remember at the end of the news scream, her and, um, um, Sydney like teamed up at the end Yeah. to go basically revenge Dewey spoilers for people who haven't seen the movie that, you know, Dewey was killed. Um, so now the whole this whole next movie is going to be centered on her, Gail Weathers. So I'm assuming it's going to do a lot with like her show and all that because she's like mm. a news reporter, so um, and like a famous mm-hmm. book writer, and she's the one that actually wrote the original book on Sydney's mother, who got murdered like before the first Scream movie, and that's why like the whole movie happened. Anyways, um, so what's going to be cool is, um, well, it's so people are sad. Sydney is not going to be making a return, as we know of so far. Nev Campbell is not going to be coming back for this movie. Uh, mm. She's going to be sitting out because she does not like the money that was presented to her. And it kind of made me laugh because she was offered like four or five million dollars just to appear for like 20 minutes. And I'm like, I would basically minutes. retire. <laughs> Yeah, me so too. Yeah, soon they're like, hey, we're going to pay you $4 million, um to say two words, and you're just going to walk around with the other characters for 10 minutes. Yeah, like, all right, all right. Where do I sign? Pick, pick my you career. Know? Yeah. <laughs> and something interesting is everybody's trying to make this like a big deal lately. And look, no disrespect to Nev, right? Nev Campbell, like, she's a great actor. Um, she's been a really good final girl for a lot of people, especially with the Scream series. And something interesting, though, is that how I feel is that, okay, no disrespect to Nev, but, you know, if she's not legally buying to a contract, then she shouldn't, you know, good yeah. for her. Like, she doesn't have to take the work. <clears throat> but, you know, if she didn't like the offer, which she didn't, she can just don't take yeah. it. But, you know, for me, it, like I think I was telling you earlier, is I don't like that actresses and actors are put on a pedestal like they're better than everybody else. It's like they're just right. people like you who just act in movies, yeah. you know? Well, and I feel like, I mean, and maybe it's just me because I'm not a huge fan of the movies like you are. So yeah. maybe I see maybe I see it differently. Maybe I'm missing something. But pretty much the way that I see it is it's kind of like because the last one was a whole new director, wasn't it? Yeah. So it was it was a whole. It wasn't Wes Craven. So Wes Craven yeah. was the original mm-hmm. screenwriter. Right. And so so it's Craven. a whole it's a whole Sorry. new you know bunch director. of people. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're good. So it's a whole new bunch of people trying to do something that they think would be a good follow-up with the story doing it kind of their own way a little bit different but also very similar to give the fans what they want yes but but i almost feel like anybody being invited on the movie they literally could have went completely a different route and be like all right here's a whole new set of cast and it's called scream six you know but they brought in some you know some of the other characters that they had they could have just kind of gone a completely different way and not have any of them at all and so and i feel like doing a new one and asking her, you know, having her in it, even though it's just a short amount of time, to me that just kind of seems like, all right, we're bringing them on, so it feels reminiscent. It's somebody that's familiar; they're on there, and it just has such a whole, you know, huge cult following for these films. People enjoy them. That's kind of like they didn't need to ask you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of how it feels. It's like I mean, maybe that's just me with you know the jobs that that I've worked or not, but it's like essentially, you know, they're extending an offer and say if you don't want it sure maybe negotiate it but if you're gonna get butt hurt about it it's like okay well they could have just not offered that in the first place yeah 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 so they could because if it's just so short scene they could do without you is like the thing is too sure the movies made her big and what she is today but at the same time it's not her movie it's not her you know role it's not it's not hers at all it was a role written for her from kevin williamson back in the day and mm. she just luckily got the part of Sydney Prescott, and then the movies took off and got really right. big. So yeah, it's not even her franchise. You know what I mean? Like this right. belongs to Wes Craven. So I hate when people talk like, "Oh, without Sydney, there's no Scream movie." But it's like, yes, there is, because it, it's not her movie. Like, sure, the story was based around her for the past five <clears> movies, <throat> but really, right. you know, it's based you, around the character. 
Yeah, and I mean, you even saw this last movie. It wasn't yeah, really yeah. centered around her until the end of the movie. No, it wasn't. So and she just happened to show up because, yeah. you know, um, which I thought was funny because, like, it's a, and that's the funny thing to me is when you mix modern. I was I would say I'll, I'll just use the, the wordage of modern acting. Yeah, is when you have these newer actors, different styles of acting, especially different styles of cinema, how things are filmed. To me, things look more realistic. And as uh-huh. soon as she popped up on the screen on what well, was a Scream Five, right, the last one. Yes. You, everybody else seemed totally realistic, and I was like, "All right, you know, I'm kind of getting drawn into this movie." And it showed her, and it was like, "He is back. Yes. He yes. comes to hurt us. Yes, we need to stop him." It was that like early 2000s like acting, <laughs> and yes. I was like, as soon as she was on there, I was like, "I can't take you serious." I yes. was like, "It's your the acting's exactly the same." So it to me, it brought down the movie a couple pegs every time she was on the screen. Yeah, I feel so. Like that. that was just me, like I said, maybe because I'm just not a huge fan of the movies, but that's how I felt when she did pop up. So I was like, all right, kind of lost interest when you show up. <laughs> you know, um, except for Dewey, Dewey's was awesome though. You know, you, really you being like a first time screen watcher, you know, mm-hmm. watching the first movie, watching this new one that just came out. And I, I know you haven't seen two, three, or four yet. Um, I watched uh one, one, two, and. Th- I, I'm pretty sure I watched one through four. I know for sure one through three, but it was a long time since uh, before I watched five. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so like you watching these, you know, what's your opinion on them bringing such an iconic like horror franchise to New York? Do you think like it's just gonna be like every other movie? You know, because it seems like every movie ends up in New I mean, York, right? So I think yeah, but I, mean, I I think it'll be kind of a cool twist though because. One, you have a completely new environment, you know, which that can also allow so many different ways of, you know, somebody to kill people. Yeah. You know, whatnot. Um, like the the first thing I heard that I thought of when you told me this, I was like, all I can see is him chasing people down in uh, Central Park. Yes. <laughs> you know, so it's like, first of all, you have people that you got to worry about that are just going to mug you in New York. So I'm like, now you got to worry about Ghostface. Yeah. Out exactly. over there, you know? So I think that'll be cool because we're so used to seeing a small town and uh-huh. and that's already hard enough because you're like okay it's a bunch of people we already know all these people who could it be it's got to be one of us then and now to a completely massive place with what is it millions of people i want to say that yeah. live in new york who who the heck is ghostface yeah yeah so i feel like that's what's gonna make it a little bit creepier to you at, at least for me like and i put myself in those scenarios where you know like strangers and one of my favorite one of my favorite movies you know things that could be things that could be real um that's what creeps me out so yes. i'm like stuff like that where like the unknown so i think that that'll be cool and that's why like yeah there is comedy to the screen movies but yeah i do agree yeah. with you like, this could really happen like it's just some dude in a mask like yeah <laughs> you know and that's what's most terrifying about these um For and sure. another thing i was reading up is i guess this is supposed to be the most brutal movie out of the whole uh, Honestly, the last one was like there was some stuff that kind of threw me off with the movie. Yeah, but but for the most part, like there was there was times on the the last one where I'm so used to the old ones where it's like you know they just stab somebody and then that's kind of it and you're like all right, scene over. Yeah, this, this one last one like- he was like dude he was like tackling people and he was stabbing like twelve times super fast in like yeah. one second, and I was like holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> so like no, there was some brutal kills there and like I mean. You know, I don't know you. You've already spoiled it, but like just that whole scene with uh, Dewey, I was like, I, I expected it. I expected oh. it. And then I didn't, but I mostly did expect it. Like eighty percent, I expected it, yeah. but not the way it went down. Yeah. And so I was like, that one actually did shock me, though. To be honest, that shot in the movie was really cool. Like the way they did it was. It, it was. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I thought that was a really cool, iconic scene, mm. and the way the camera was showing, and he, you know, Ghostface was standing over the body. Yeah, it was just really cool to see. They didn't, uh, they didn't pull a, um, what was it? The uh, I think it's called the. It was the Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Did you ever watch that? Yes, the comedy. It, at least, yeah, at least they didn't like Tucker and Dale him, where he just tripped and fell into a wood chipper. Yes. <laughs> so it's. Like <laughs> yeah. So anyways, we I, I know we can move on to ill or yeah. Res- War, but yeah, I just wanted to yeah. touch on real quick. I'm I'm super excited. I'm I'm hoping you can see the cool. movie next year because <laughs> uh, you know I'm definitely I'm excited to go watch it. So. 
yeah and I'll, I'll definitely have to watch through them again like if i did before five i probably would have been a little more excited about about it yeah. or at least kind of at least remember somewhat what's going on yeah. At, le- at least with the characters like when you see people pop up on the screen you're not like who's that or who are they related to like you just kind of you already know off the spot yeah for sure so definitely be catch scream next year march 23rd i believe it comes out so hey. i know me, i'm already static i already got my ghost face shirt so and i know this one we actually did talk about i think in our last podcast yeah <laughs> it'll, so um, still not too much going on just want to check this out real quick Definitely reminds me of like Resident Evil villains, though. Yes, absolutely. I'm wondering if it's gonna be somewhat like Doom, basically. So, okay. Here's <laughs> I feel my like I'm, I'm really hoping this game's not a letdown because I feel like we get so many of these 10 second clips. Yes. And then they're like, ew. And then that's it. And we're like, uh, all right. It's so another, it's another corner of the building we saw last time. Here, here's my here's my letdown with these with these, I guess these type of games. So I feel like these you know directors, producers, whatever of the game, they have this vision that they want to do, and then eventually you know the game gets big enough where it gets attention from these bigger studios, and the bigger mm-hmm. studios take them on and they get funding and all that, right? I don't like. I do, I do like this. Like, I think the game is looking really cool. You know, obviously we'll have to see when it comes out if it's going to be good or not. The game's already looking sick. Um, but the one thing I don't like is if you notice back in the original uh, gameplay, like demo, not even a game yet. It was just like a like showing off what the person you know made. Um, I like the style better than right. what they're showing off now. I feel like now. They're like, oh crap, you know, we're getting funding, we're getting big. Now we got to turn our game into like Resident Evil copy or something. Yeah. You know, which I don't like. I wish people mm. would just stick with their vision and just run with it and create their unique game instead of always trying to appease people and what they want to see, you know. Because if yeah. you notice, um, I don't know if, if you can bring up the original ill gameplay real quick. Let me see if I can find that real quick here. The game looks super, um, obviously it was super unfinished because it was just like a demo. Um, of just like a scene or whatever that someone made. Uh, was it this one right here? Yeah. So I watched this. So co- to compare this to now the original, you know, the new clip that we're getting. Um, I don't know if you could skip forward a little bit. Yeah. Well, the, the one thing I've noticed about this game, though, was pretty much it was a a lot of these vi- videos have started in the beginning was very much a showcasing of the techno- technological advancements or at least the, um, I'm trying to think of the word, <laughs> at least the um, the skills and kind of what they've done or what they're able to do in the yeah. modeling software. Like if you see it, like when they showed off the whole um, kind of the villains in the other video, where like his face kind of like breaks apart, you know, it's got all these different like technical looking things with the teeth, you yeah. know, almost like the face looked like it was melting. All that was rendered in real time. Yeah. So this game was definitely showed off kind of what they were able to do with that technology and what they're doing to create those models. That's what was really cool to me, at least, um, you know, coming from yeah. like an animation sort of like background or at least wanting to get into that. This is what I like. See, like yeah. that. So like, so that's like game- real time. The game that's looks like time. Maggie, if you notice, yeah. in a sense. But that's just the way it plays, and I like that. Yeah, see, that looks so awesome. Yeah. And I hope they, they stick with that. I hope they stick with this. Well, and I think the reason why is because the other one is showing off actual gameplay. This wasn't really actual gameplay. Yeah. And so this is like, like this is more like an actual movie. So it's like. So if you notice, if it looks choppy, it's because this is actually a shot. Like it says, I think 60 FPS on here on YouTube. Yeah. That's just what it's outputted to. But for that film look, it's actually 24 frames. So that's what's making this game look more like an actual film and kind of realistic. So it's not smooth. Yeah, which I like though. I, I think mm-hmm. that type no, of No, me look, too. I, you don't get that nowadays. For sure. Yeah. 
everything's all smooth like when not this actually looks like a like a film it looks different yeah which i think would be cool too so i'm kind of hoping that they do somewhat stick to that route yeah and i love but I, the but i think uh, this was more so like it shows like it's a game that. maybe yeah maybe they have changed some things up a bit then but from what i did notice like the last time like when they did show off the um this video, this clip right here, specifically when he shoots him in the arm, you know, that's not, that's not animated. Like when it's holding on by like the tendons yeah, and that's stuff in there, all, all that's like in real time. And they're like animated to be, to have like the destruction and whatnot, the dismemberment. Yeah. So that was the cool thing with this game. And it's just... If you notice, there's no sound. Like the the game is yeah, so quiet. It's like, so it's quiet. Eerie. It's very eerie. But I love that, and I, I wish, I hope they stick with this. I really do. Yeah, like it's so quiet, and then compared to like you see this, like this That's one, you can kind of tell it's a little choppy, like uh -huh. right here. But you could tell it's definitely smoothed out. Looks like an actual video game. Mm -hmm. Which I'm okay with. I just wish, I hope they stick with. What, what yeah, we were seeing, you know, like right here, it's yeah, it's kind of weird to see when you have something going from 24 frames essentially, exported at 24 frames to look like a film, to then 200 plus frames right here. Yeah, something that's really smooth. It it does make it look a little more generic, I guess you could say. I'm excited though. I yeah. I'm I'm getting I'm getting super pumped. I'm I'm praying this game turns out well because it's yeah. got such a big reception already. And... It, it's one of those games to me that kind of reminds me of, uh, and I, I always blank on the name, but it, that other one, remember, it, it kind of looked like Bioshock. Do you remember that one I'm talking about? They showed uh, it off at like E3 like a couple times or whatnot, or like some videos a while back. Atomic something. Atomic oh, Atomic Heart. Heart. That one. Th it, this game kind of <laughs> reminds me of that in the sense of they keep showing off some of these videos that don't show off too much. Yes. And then it's kind of like, all right, look out for our game. What's coming out? Look out for our game. Yeah, we, we don't know. <laughs> and that's kind of it. Like, this one was 2021. Yeah. Oops. Like, for this one here. This one's like another gameplay video. This, yeah, again, this one's choppy, the same thing. And I like that. I, I don't know. I just think yeah. it looks cool. And this right here in the hallway, this looks sick. It's like, so quiet. It's, They're it's crackling so weird, on the ground. Dude. Yes. Like everybody here looks just looks bloated, so they definitely have like different it. monsters that they've created, which is kind of cool. That's why I'm hoping they stick with this kind of gameplay and monsters because they look so real. Yeah. And I like the ragdoll physics. Yeah. Oh, it's so creepy sounding. Yeah, this these videos definitely for sure did get me a little more excited about yeah. the game compared to the last one that they did show off. Yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, what's your what's your final thoughts on it? <clears throat> um, still excited. I mean, I'm still excited to see you know where where it's gonna go with it. Yeah, kind of like you know if there's a story and whatnot, like what the whole game is about. Um, for me, from the beginning, I've just I've just been more fascinated with just the technology like the the animations or like what they were able to do doing everything in real time in unreal engine yeah i think everything looks nice so for me i'm more geeking out on the technical aspect like yeah. the game design side but as in for the actual game um i am excited to see wh where the final product is going to eventually Land. get to and, yeah. and become yeah. mm -hmm. for sure yeah same i agree with you and yeah, I'm definitely excited. I, I I know they don't have a release date for it. They just said it'll come out when it comes out. So, right. Well, yeah, it keeps developing. Yeah, and then last one. Yeah, let's check out Resident Evil Four video. I know you you did one uh, not too long ago, a couple days ago, I think. I did. I did a Resident Evil Four recap. Was it on the same video? Or no? Uh, yeah. yeah, it was on. Oh, the okay. Trailer. <laughs> Well, I figured we could probably just mute it, and then if you want to just talk about it, we can. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, so we can kind so, of skim over a little bit. Resident Evil 4 is being remastered or re uh, remade, 
I guess I should say not a remaster, sorry, remade for um, the you know modern platforms. Consoles, yeah, Xbox mm -hmm. Series X, PlayStation Five, PC. Um, it's coming from the original Resident Evil Four back in what was the original two thousand nine, I think. Something somewhere around there, yeah. Or two thousand seven. It was one of those. <clears throat> um, I remember when Resident Evil Four first came out. Um, it was actually my first ever Resident Evil game I ever played. Uh, to be fair, that's the first um, one I played as well. And it was back on the GameCube. Me and Nolan played it. My brother. <laughs> Uh, we got it for that, and then we got it for the PlayStation, and then we got it for the Wii, and then we got it for a lot of other different, you know, consoles now. But it, it's so amazing to me that a game has held up this long, uh, and it's so iconic that they basically put it on every single console or mm -hmm. whatever there is known to man. It's kind of like Skyrim, right? Like, this game is so big, and it Speaking has of Skyrim um next year actually they're coming out with it on the samsung uh refrigerator are they so, no <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised i could see, I could see them doing it though i know <laughs> they came out with that skyrim like mobile thing and it was like oh my gosh skyrim it's apple watch. on everything yeah it's like a skyrim apple watch yeah and um so i'm, I'm super excited i i'm, I'm really hoping that <clears throat> um you know they do a, a, this game justice because I know for a fact, this game looks so if they, good though. If they, if they don't remaster this game really well, there's going to be an uproar. Because this is whether people oh, want to sure. say it's the best Resident Evil game or not. This is the most iconic, memorable Resident Evil game out of the series. Like everybody knows about Resident Evil Four, and it was one of the best Resident Evil games, hands down. Like mm -hmm. if not the best Resident Evil game made. And so, oh, 2005. Um, okay. I'm I'm super excited. I, I can't wait, just like everyone else. I'm definitely going to pre-order it when I can. Um, I'll, I'm definitely probably going to play it for the PC because I don't own yeah. a newer console. But um, I'm going to have to... Hopefully my hopefully my PC can run it. <laughs> By it looks the... really good. Like, Did you ever watch any of the Resident Evil movies that they came out with that were like on Netflix? Uh, yeah, I did. Like That's the, the cool thing to me is when you see games that were obviously the you know they were limited by technology so yeah. you see all the older games um how they kind of looked versus the movie as a kid you're like it looks just like it you know which obviously yeah. the games came out first but it was always cool to me to see movies and then they come out with a newer game and it looks like the movies mm -hmm. that's the cool thing to me is like, like this right here looks super sick like the, the graphics look really nice um obviously faces look way better than they originally oh, did oh, yeah. <laughs> hair looks a lot better but it'll be nice to see like resident evil 7 like i watched you play that one for a little bit and just the environment yeah, is super creepy so it's yeah. kind of cool to see all that like what they are able to do and what they have created and be able to kind of um replicate that sort of feeling um in these other games we hear and like Resident Evil 4, like this game already scared the crap out of me. Like the first one I played was actually Resident Evil 1. I think it was the first one's the one you walk up. There's like the, the person laying on the ground with the crow. You turn him over and that's when they start like attacking you, right? The very, very uh, first game you show up in Raccoon City. Yes. Okay. So that's, as, that's a literally, I'm not joking. That's as far as I got in <laughs> Resident Evil 1 was what? <laughs> That's when the zombie turns over and then you're like, oh my God. And then they start like walking towards you. And then there's like two or three zombies there. And you're trying to navigate through past the cop cars, like broken down cars in the city. First one I played. Second one I played was Resident Evil 4. I just remember walking through the city um, and then try and make it through all the village people there. And then all of a sudden the dude with the potato sack over yes. his head with the chainsaw. And then I just remember he ran up to me. I, I freaked out and he chopped off my head. And then I just like disappeared into the puddle of blood. And I was like, all right, who wants the controller? Yes. And that yeah. was, that was it. That was it. Yeah. That's all I ever played for Resident Evil. The most I ever played was Resident Evil five, but that one seemed less creepy to me. Yeah. And I also played that one like way later on in my life. So I am excited to play this one, but I know for sure it's going to scare the crap out of me. I was going to say that probably the most you played Resident Evil is watching me play 7. <laughs> uh, pretty much, yeah. 
I still haven't even touched uh, Outlast. I have. I think I have both of those games, and I still haven't really even touched them. Those things are terrifying I, too. I played like the first two minutes, and somebody like fell from fell from the sky, and I was like, no. Nope, I'm done. And then I think I'm stuck down there trying to turn on generators, and I just said no. Like, and nah. I just I, <laughs> I uninstalled it. Next Super Mario. <laughs> yeah, I think I literally just hopped back onto like Apex or something or League. That's funny. <laughs> and I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm. I'm super static for this. I yeah. I can't wait. It'll I, be cool. I'm I'm praying they do it justice. I really am. I I I don't want them to change too much of the game just because. I want it to be barely as possible to the original as much, you yeah, know, as just as aesthetically, can. you know, visual, like a visual change. Yeah. And I know that with remakes, of course, they're going to change things and, you know, add stuff they didn't have and maybe things they didn't use in the yeah. back then they couldn't because of the technology and stuff. So that's cool. But I, I, I don't like when the game developers are like, hey, we're remaking a game, but it's going to be totally different. It's like, no, I want to play the same game, but I just want it's updated like, graphics. Yeah. It's like the director's cut, and then they kind of change some stuff to make it, which I think could be nice. Like, they could probably change things that make yeah. it a little more easier to understand. Maybe something didn't make sense the way yeah. that they did it the last time, or didn't really kind of pack that punch that they expected it to, or, you know, convey a certain feeling or express something the way that they intended to. So maybe they'll change that. They would surprise us and yeah. bring out Resident Evil 4, you know, remake, but then also just do a remaster too of the original game. Yeah. So I that, think they're probably just going to stick just to the one. Yeah, I think so too, but that would be mm -hmm. cool. But yeah, no, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm, I'm super ecstatic. I can't wait to see more of gameplay of this. I don't think we're going to get too much more because Capcom's pretty, very yeah. nit <laughs> knitly tied on their game so we don't ever see a lot from them yeah uh, which i, which I think will be still cool though like because it'll be nice to, be able to just hop in and just be able to play it and then you know maybe play the original get ready for it yeah and then play the new one and then i'm sure you'll be able to kind of pinpoint what's new what's you know what what's completely new what's the same you know what's uh you know improved and whatnot i, I wish there was like a co-op mod for Resident 4 that we could play through together but <laughs> it'd be less yeah. scary <laughs> you know but yeah, yeah i mean um, yeah a lot of these games i'm pretty excited for like pretty much i, I want to play like all these that are here and now now that i have time um new job now that i have time you know be able to actually spend some more time playing games and uh Ooh. be able to kind of like look out there and to see what now is existing what now is going to be coming out in 2022 or you know what's what's all new coming up in the uh next you know year or two so who has your vote out of all the games we talked about tonight? Who, what, what, like, what's the most excited for you? You think? Um, probably just because I've kind of played a little bit more would be that um, Callisto Protocol. Mm, okay. Um, probably that one. Um, kind of thinking Witchfire. Like all these games, I do want to get. Yeah. Um, but I think probably the most excited I would be for would be um, would be the Callisto Protocol. Yeah. Um, as well as probably Resident Evil 4. I, I'd say probably those two for sure. Yeah. And then Ill, just because I don't know what the heck is going on with that one. Yeah. But, I just, um, but for sure, from what I've seen, uh, these two games. Yeah, I think for me, Resident Evil 4 is definitely going to take the, the lot here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Resident Evil 4 and then also Ill. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, first, uh, the other games do look cool, like Witchfire and all that. I mean, like, don't, don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. I'm super excited for those, but... Yeah, definitely Ill and Resident 4 is going to have to take the play for me. And Scream, of course. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big Scream fan, so I'm super excited for the next movie. Um, but yeah, no, that was good. Um, that would be it then. So I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure we're going to want to try to do podcasting at least once a week if we can. Um, yeah. For sure. Fridays obviously would, would work the best. Um, but if anything... I am off earlier now, so I'm sure we'll try to do something once a week. Kind of sure. depends on what games are out there um, to talk about. Yeah. Uh, but you know, maybe if we hear anything new about whatever else you know we have talked about, then I'm sure we'll present that on here. Uh, we did want to get into. I at least want to get back into streaming, um, but I'm thinking what we'll probably do is we might move this over to Twitch. Um, but then upload those VODs to YouTube um, just to make it a little more uh, personable, um, be able to connect a little bit more. 
so i think that might be a good little route so maybe, maybe we'll try that out um i gotta figure out that info <laughs> for the <laughs> twitch but i would say definitely look down in the in the description for that link um if there's anything you guys are excited for you know let us know yeah. um you know if there's any games you guys saw during this uh um summer showcase thing <laughs> whatever it was called <laughs> i keep blanking on it uh you know, if there's anything up. yeah <laughs> So if there's anything you guys were excited for, you know, definitely let us know. Um, but these were our picks, at least. Yeah, and I'm hoping next podcast we can talk about Diablo Four because I'm so pumped. Yeah, <laughs> Diablo Four is going to be. Uh, I'm I'm still addicted to Diablo Immortal. So you got to move your bank account over. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's uh, two. I gotta, I gotta make a new one now, so that'll be two savings accounts. Yeah, yeah one for one for Diablo Immortal and one for Diablo Four. <laughs> It's gonna be great. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well, that was fun. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll see everybody on the uh, next Nerdcast. All righty. You guys have a good night then. Thanks for watching. All right. Take care. Later. Bye. Love it.